So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's great to have you all back here today. Um, so today's tutorial is going to be on creating a native module library with Expo for React Native. This is a really exciting topic because native modules in Expo are actually way easier to make than they are in vanilla React Native and even in my opinion, other frameworks like Flutter. Uh, what we're gonna make today is actually a pedometer or a step counter uh, if you prefer the more relaxed uh, terminology, but it's pretty cool. Basically what we're gonna do is we're going to take the native Android and native iOS functionality for step counting, and we're gonna get it to communicate with the Expo layer of React Native using the new Expo native modules. Expo native modules are really special uh, because not a lot of people know this, but they actually use the JavaScript interface. The JavaScript interface is much faster than um, the legacy version of the React Native Bridge because it allows you to communicate synchronously between the React Native layer and the native layer. Uh, this is actually the same technology that Turbo modules are based on for vanilla React Native. So it's really exciting to be working with it. And in my opinion, uh, these are actually much easier to set up than the uh, Turbo modules in vanilla React Native. Okay, so that's everything. I'm really excited to get into it. Please like and subscribe guys, and uh, let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is just run the prompt to create the module. Um, basically, I'm just gonna hit enter through all the prompts. Um, if you're gonna publish your package for real, of course, put more thought into this, but I'm just gonna call it Expo Sample Pedometer. Also, I just realized after editing, I forgot to um, put in a restriction of this project, so I'm gonna say it now. Um, for this particular project on Android, it'll only work on Android 10 and above. This is not a restriction of Expo. Expo modules can work on much earlier versions of Android. However, uh, because of the pedometer code that I wrote natively, it's only gonna work in Android 10 and above. Uh, but again, if you wanna do things that are more legacy than this, feel free to add it in. Expo modules have much earlier support than Android 10. This is just um, my imposition. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is just delete some files we're not gonna use. Uh, the first being the sample pedometer view um, from the Android files. The next we're gonna delete the Expo sample pedometer view from the Swift files. And then we're gonna delete anything to do with web support from JavaScript, like the Expo sample pedometer um, and the web TS. Uh, you can just basically copy them from this terminal um, and into yours and delete all the same files. Uh, we won't need any of these. All right, next thing we're going to open up VS Code. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the index file. The index file is, of course, the root of our uh, library. For now, we're only going to leave the hello function and nothing else. Okay, so the next thing I want you to notice is these files. Um, the first one being Expo Sample Pedometer Module. Of course, we could modify this in VS Code, but that's not that great um, because we don't get any IntelliSense. So let's use Android Studio. Now watch these steps very carefully because if you do them wrong, you're gonna open the wrong file and be very confused. So under click Example and click Reveal and Finder, ignore this Android folder, go into Example, under example, there will be another Android folder. Click and drag that into your open on Android Studio, and that will open the example project and will give us access to IntelliSense and also the project files for the library. So you wanna be in the project pane, not the Android pane here as well. Another good thing to note. After that, look for Expo Sample Pedometer under the libraries and pick the Expo Sample Pedometer module. So what I'm gonna do now is delete a comment. And this is really cool. If I tab back into VS Code, you'll notice the same comment that's deleted here. So basically anything we edit in Android Studio will also be edited in our library. So all I'm gonna leave behind here is just the hello function and I'm gonna delete everything else. And as you can see, the same changes are reflected back in the library. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is compile things uh, just to make sure that it worked. 
So let's see that. I'm gonna do npx expo run Android, and I'm gonna do dash dash device. We have to do this project on hardware because the pedometer will only work on hardware. It will not work on simulator. So don't try to run this on simulator, but there we go. Um, everything's running just as we expect. Okay, so let's do the same for iOS. Um, iOS is much easier to open. So all we do is say open example, iOS, and then we look for the workspace project. We can then hit enter on that. And you'll notice there's two projects off to the side, our sample project in the pods. Under pods, I want you to go to development pods and then find expo sample pedometer. You might see a view file here. If it is, just delete it. It's just a reference. We deleted it earlier. Uh, but what I want you to notice is that if I go into the Swift file, similarly to the Kotlin files, if I delete things in Xcode, it will delete them also in the library files. Pretty cool. So just like we did in Android, let's delete everything except for the hello function. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna hit save. And again, remember to delete that view file if it's there. It's just a reference. But if I go back into VS Code, uh, it's also deleted here. Okay, so I'm gonna run a build now. Um, similar to um, Android, I have to run this on hardware. I cannot run it on a simulator. So once CocoaPods are installed, I'm going to pick uh, the name of my physical device, not my simulator, because this will not work on a simulator. And there we go. Okay, so I went ahead and I just did some boilerplate UI for the example app. None of this is functional or does anything. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write the methods to fill in that boilerplate and count people's steps. So first thing we're gonna do is, like I said earlier, limit things to Android 10. You're gonna do that in the build Gradle file for the library. After this, we're going to head into the example project and in that build.gradle, we're gonna upgrade the min SDK version to 29 as well so that both of those are running Android 10 only. Okay, so back in our uh, module, we're going to change the name to request permissions instead of hello. And in the Android manifest for our library, we're gonna add the activity recognition permission. And now inside of request permissions, what we're gonna do is actually request them. And we're gonna do that by grabbing the activity from the app context that Expo provides. And we're gonna say if the application context exists, we are going to check to see if the permission has already been enabled um, for activity. Oh, and I imported the wrong uh, manifest there. Let me fix that really quickly. I should have imported it from Android. Um, so if that permission is not granted, what we're gonna do is we're going to request that permission from the user. And we create a quick constant for the request code. I'm pretty confident this number could be anything. Um, I'm just gonna make it 10. Okay, so back in our index, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the name to request permission and remove string. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run npm build so that our um, JavaScript files get synced in the example project. Next, I'm going to import request permissions, put it into the request permissions folder. I'm gonna rename this file just so there isn't an infinite loop because I name them very similar. But after the permissions are granted, what should happen is we should be able to um, progress forward. So uh, I have to go to example to do that. And then what I can do is I can press enable permissions and you can see I'm then able to allow them. All right, so back in Android Studio, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually count the steps. And in order to do that, we're going to create a reference to the sensor manager. I'm also gonna create a class called step listener. Uh, I'm gonna comment that out for now while I create the class. So what this is, is it is a class that implements an abstract class for sensor events. This is kind of how it works in object-oriented programming. 
I have to fulfill the contract, and then I'm able to um, get sensor events in this object from um, Android. So in order to do that, I have to implement the methods by hovering over class. It just automatically does it for you. I'm then going to make a local variable for steps, and I'm going to increment steps and send it to the JavaScript layer using events every time a step comes in. So I'm going to leave this string constant blank for now, but I'm going to make it um, in a second. And the step two steps just kind of makes this into um, like a JSON or something you'd be familiar with from JavaScript. So I'm going to make the event name on step counted and I'm going to replace it there. Next, I'm going to use that reference in the function I'm going to create. I'm going to do a bunch of enters here. I want to try to get this closer to the middle. So um, the function is going to be called start sending data and this is going to initialize the step counter. I'm going to take the null checks from before and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, oh, I probably only need application context once there. But anyway, from the application context, I'm going to get the system service and cast it to a sensor manager. After that, I'm going to put the send event function from Expo into my event listener I just created. I'm going to get the default sensor for step detection. And finally, what I'm going to do is register a sensor on the step step manager that takes in my step sensor and my listener so that I can actually send those events to the React Native layer. Oh, and I made a typo. I'll fix that really quick. And let me get rid of those spaces. Okay, so now back in the index file for our library, what we're going to do is import the event emitter and the subscription. Um, after that, I am going to create an emitter and when I create the emitter, I'm just gonna pass the whole module into it uh, that allows us to create it. After that, I'm gonna create my own event for step changes. It's literally just a step with a number. I'm gonna export um, the start sending data function, which is the one I just created. And then I'm going to create a listener that's gonna handle uh, when the steps change. And I can do that by just returning the emitter like this. And putting in the listener, of course. Okay, so uh, at this point, I'm gonna run build and get things synced up with the example again. I'm then going to import the different methods I just created for sending data and everything like that. In start tracking, I'm going to add start sending data so that we're able to get data from the um, native side. And then in the use effect, I'm going to register a listener for these steps. And in here, I just give it a callback for step. And then I use my set number of steps uh, use state hook for that. And on my return, I'm just going to return the um, removal of the subscription. Okay, so just before compiling, I realized I made a little mistake. Um, with your event, you also have to register it using the events method. And I'm going to use my constant from earlier in order to do that. All right, so now if I run things, I should be able to get the event. So as you can see, it allows, and now I'm gonna kind of shake my phone a bit. And after waiting for an uncomfortable amount of time, uh, there it is coming in. And um, let me really quickly show you this in real life, but here's it working virtually. Okay, so uh, here we are in real life. I'm gonna tap, tap uh, start tracking here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake the phone to kind of simulate walking. And as you can see, uh, the steps kind of go up at the pace that I'm moving the phone and I could stop and the counting stops. And if I start going again, you can see the count starts going up again. So the step counter is working pretty cool. Okay. So now that we've set up everything in Android, we'll want to do it with iOS. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is set up permissions by hooking into the Expo um, pre-built system. 
we're going to create a function that takes in a configuration from Expo Prebuild. If the iOS config doesn't exist, we're going to create it in an object. If the info plist doesn't exist, uh, we're going to do the same. Next thing we're going to do is add to the info plist to the NS Motion Usage description. And I'm going to hard, and hard code in a description for now, but you can actually customize this. However, I kind of cut it out of the tutorial for the sake of length. Next thing we're going to do is just export that function so it can be accessed by Expo Prebuild. So now in the app.json, we're going to import the plugins key. Um, and there we're going to go dot dot slash, and then we're going to use our plugin. However, if you install this through NPM, you should get this from the node modules. You should not get it from dot dot slash. That's just because we're in the example right now that we can do that. Okay, so let's run pre-build in our example and let's see if it worked. Okay, so now if we go into the info plist and we look up NS Mosul's usage description, there it is. Perfect. Okay, so now in Xcode, I'm just going to write all the code at once because it's really simple and we already did the JavaScript part. So like Android, I need to match the on step counted for our event name. For the pedometer, I'm just going to create it from core motion. So I'm also going to register this event uh, like I needed to in Android. So for my request permissions, this is a bit of a hack, um, but it's just the way it is in iOS. Just using the pedometer forces it to request the permission, so that's why I'm referencing that there. Next, I'm going to create the function start sending data. And so whenever there's updates that come in from the um, pedometer, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to send those events to the, um, to the React Native side. So I'm just doing a guard there. If the pedometer data is nil, just cut things short. Otherwise, I'm going to send the event to the native side with the step. And the steps are counted by themselves in iOS, so I don't need to maintain that uh, step local variable like I do in Android. Okay, so now I'm going to compile things. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in uh, real life. Hey guys, so here we are again in reality, this time with an iPhone. So first thing I'm gonna do is tap request permissions. I'm gonna hit okay. Then I'm gonna tap start tracking. And now I'm gonna kind of shake the phone. Unfortunately, there's a bit of latency in iOS with the detection. It's always a little behind, unlike Android, which is on the spot. So you can see it start recognizing steps every four or five steps or so. And if we stop, we'll see a few steps come in uh, with some latency, but now it should be paused. Okay, so we've been on 29 for a while. Let's start walking again. And we see the steps start coming in again. So there you go, guys. This is your tutorial on making native code modules in Expo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it really fun and interesting. I definitely did. And um, yeah, happy hacking.